Complaints have you down? Are there too many complaints rolling in in your company? Too many one-star reviews? Have you found yourself caring less and less about it? Do you not look and analyze and try to find patterns where the complaints are concerned? Do you have one or two employees that are driving the majority of complaints? Do you have one or two processes that are driving the majority of complaints? Have you just given up? Well, you may have complaint complacency. And this episode is for you. So, without further ado, roll that beautiful bean footage. Welcome back to another episode of CX Riot Radio, where we talk about customer experience and stuff still in a hyper-caffeinated state. I'm David, I'm the caffeinated CXO, and I'm the host here on CX Riot Radio. You may remember the show as Caffeinated CX, but that was a while ago. So, if you do, hey, how's it going? Alright, so today, we're going to talk about... um, Complaint complacency. Complaint complacency. Where you stop caring, or when a company stops caring, about the complaints they receive. Now, this is not a good place to be at. It is not a recommended course of action, but it happens. And... If you focus solely on complaints, if that's your job role, is to focus solely on complaints, it can get a little overwhelming. You can become a little uh, nonchalant about them, right? Because they start to drown out. They, It's like when you put notifications on your watch, right? And you have too many notifications coming in. Eventually, all that buzzing, all that vibrating, just going to fade into the background and no one's going to uh, do anything about it, right? You're, you're just going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, another one. Awesome. So, what causes complaint complacency? A lot of it is in the... Well, when other things take precedence over that, right? When you have a bunch of other stuff on your plate too, and now you have to take care of these complaints, right? Right? And it doesn't help if, uh, again, you're focused solely on those. Because, well, it gets a little boring after a while, right? You get a little burned out of hearing the same complaints. And this is especially true if, uh, let's say, you're in charge of handling all the complaints. You're in charge of doing this, that, and the other for the complaints and documenting it and trying to get them resolved. But nobody's doing anything on the other side. To prevent these complaints from happening. Right? It's been said that uh, only 4% of people with a complaint will uh, say anything about it, right? Which leaves 96% of the people with the same complaints to either not say anything at all or just to go away and never use your services again. That's bad. So if you can. Uh, resolve the complaints before they happen by fixing internal processes or creating policies or just, you know, making things good on the back end, those complaints start to dwindle and uh, complaint complacency can't creep in. So, and again, I get it. I completely do. But let's talk about how your complaint structure is set up. How much power is, are the, do the people on the front line have to resolve complaints? And every company is different. Every department is different. And 
Oh, some companies don't even allow the people to give like a $50 refund if that's all the customer wanted to make them happy, right? Because it's that controlled. Um, that's bad. Um, the people on the front lines, first of all, hear about the complaints first, right? They, they actually, in all likelihood, know more about what's going on with the customer base than marketing, sales, let alone upper management, right? Because they're dealing with it day after day, either in person or voice to voice, chat to chat, whatever, right? Whatever they, wherever they are on the front lines, they know more about what makes customers upset and happy than the rest of the company. And sometimes companies don't really pay attention to what's going on on the front lines, right? Their heads are elsewhere. They're looking up and out and not down and in. That's where middle managers come in. That's where the advocates come in, right? Where that stuff can filter up. Or if you're really cool, you can have unobstructed communication between all levels of the company. Now, once a company gets to a certain size and a certain hierarchy, that becomes more difficult. Um, if you're more of a flat model, which is recommended, um, then it's a lot easier, right? You can just reach out on Slack or email or, hey, in the break room, right? Approach the upper management and be like, hey, this is what's going on. So, I mean, it is what it is. What can we do to fix this? So, in other organizations, when there's like 18 layers of management over the front line, um, a little bit more difficult because at some point that communication is going to cease once it before it hits upper or even senior management. So, I mean, what are we going to do? It is what it is, as they say. So, I mean, there you go. So, but the people who handle the majority of complaints should have the power to resolve the majority of complaints. Now, anything where it's a little bit more complex, legal, things like that, obviously you want someone above the front lines to take care of that, whether it's uh, a, let's say, a resolution specialist or management, a VP, um, a customer experience um officer or something like that to take care of those complaints and then to go over in the back and find out why the complaint happened and shore up the defenses so those uh, don't happen again uh, that's the thing we need to have someone companies need to have someone who is monitoring the interactions that the customers are having with your employees your service or your product and then fix the experiences in the experience that's what it takes and yeah I guess you could do it with some fancy AI tool or you could just pay attention either or pay attention to what they're saying if you guys use a ticket system for complaints which has its pros and cons then glance over the tickets and see if there's any patterns you can even have someone else do it for you and present you a report it's not hard so, especially if you're using a ticketing system, it's it's simple. It's child's play to come up with that and analyze it and see what see what the see what the patterns are. If there's no patterns, then the ticketing system has failed, right? Or it's just random things, and you're really small, and this episode's not really meant for you, I guess. But if you go and you see patterns. You can fix those patterns because you have the ability to reach in and take a look and analyze everything and be like, okay, so this policy that we're having is causing this complaint or it's this policy is in the, not enabling the front line to do their jobs and de-escalate before it reaches critical mass. So now if you don't have a ticketing system, in play you have to have something right to track everything i'm assuming you do so and i hope you do but i mean it is what it is if you don't so i mean i'm not gonna i'm not mad at you so i'm not mad at you at all but if you have 
a system that tracks complaints and is robust and nothing falls through the cracks, then you have a leg up on a lot of companies and a lot of people. And here's the thing. And I know it's a buzzword, right? And I know a lot of people pay lip service to it. But it's like... Here's the thing. The customer should be at the core of the business. There should be people that are in charge of the customer experience. If there's not, you should enable someone and promote someone to watch over the customer, right? Um, you don't have to go as far as having an empty chair in your meetings where uh, the customer would have sat if they were there, maybe with a sign that says customer on it. I mean, that's all nice and good if you do that, but it's not necessary. No, People look at that and they kind of scoff at it, right? But there should be someone who watches over and makes sure the customers are being treated right, all complaints are being handled in a timely manner that benefits both parties, the customer and the company, and then someone who not just resolves complaints, but restores confidence in the brand. Because that's something that throwing money at complaints doesn't do. In fact, that just begets more refunds. As soon as people start finding out that if you complain, you'll just get a refund, you're going to find you're giving out a lot more refunds and then that becomes the culture, right? Sometimes people don't want refunds. Sometimes people just want to be heard and they want to be fixed, right? They want whatever issue it was to be fixed and fixed going forward, nothing more. So sometimes it pays just to hear someone out. So, but complaint complacency is a real thing. Just like digital fatigue is a real thing or digital, digital deafness, right? It's the same concept. If you're inundated with something, it becomes just a part of the background noise and you stop caring so much about it. And if you find yourself in that position, either take a step back and have someone else watch over it until you can recalibrate or get your head in the game. Start caring because the more complaints that you get that are unresolved or resolved in a half ass way, the worst things are going to be when it comes to the customer base of your company. And you're not going to be able to identify what is happening, what is driving all these complaints. And usually it's only one or two things that are driving the complaints. And those one or two things, while may, they might be simple to fix, they're not easy to fix. Right? Once you identify something, you can work on it. If you can measure it, you can manage it. So, right now, after you listen to this, right, I only got a few minutes left, is uh, go and look at the complaints that you have and go back a couple of years. See what the patterns are. See if they're easily fixable. If there's any low-hanging fruit that you can just grab and resolve immediately on the back end. Then, set procedures going forward that will eliminate those complaints because an unresolved complaint, no matter how minor, can snowball into something stupid and something that's incredibly hard to overcome. Don't let that happen to you. So that's today's episode. If you could, if you could like, subscribe, um, comment, share, let's share the show so we can make the show grow. All of that stuff. And I'll see you next time on CX Riot Radio. Bye.